All right. So this is an, an important topic uh, to address the, the importance of, of Java and Postgres. And it seems like um, this is, this is going to be interesting, given the numbers I'm going to show to you later, that there seems to be not really much interest in Postgres in Java. Um, which is one of the topics I want to cover here today. Hopefully, you, you might be as, as I am. So um, we're going to address what was, what's been the past so far of Postgres and Java, uh, where we are at right now, and what I, in a really humble position, think that the future might be. So just a little bit before starting, uh, I wanted to introduce myself. As Salam already said, I'm Alba Alvaro in, in Spanish, or Alvaro if that's easier for you to pronounce. Um, I work for a company called 8K Data, uh, trying to figure out what's the meaning of the name of the company, uh, especially being on a Postgres conference. It's not a really difficult. Um, other than that, uh, we are an R&D company, so we, we do uh, research on crazy stuff. Uh, some of that stuff happens to be TorDB. It's a uh, NoSQL database it, that is compatible with MongoDB, then runs on top of Postgres and performs a NoSQL to SQL transformation. And all this, by the way, is done in Java. So uh, based on this experience, uh, is part of the reason of this talk, why are we focusing a lot on Postgres and Java? And uh, we're also part of the Postgres community from a long time. We're the founders of the Postgres Spain, which has become since uh, its uh, inception the fifth largest Postgres community in the world with over approximately like 600 people right now. If you want to talk to me after the conference, I'll be around till tomorrow. Um, but you can also find me on Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever. So let's get started. Postgres and Java, two key technologies in the enterprise world nowadays. And they, let's see how they play along together and what it's about this. So some statements first. Java is the enterprise language. So this brings me to an interesting point here, like how many people attending this conference are paying attention to the, uh, you know, or focusing on the enterprise market. Might not be as hipster or as sexy as other languages nowadays, but it's, it's the, fa the de facto enterprise language, right? So uh, indeed, uh, as the slide says, there might be more code accessing Postgres from a Java programming language than any other language. So it is important as a community that we understand the importance of Java. Most of our users are probably Java. Whether we want it or not, that's, that's what it happens, right? And, and both are mature and reliable technologies that you can trust upon. So it looks like a good combination. So it's probably a safe bet to bet on Postgres and Java at the same time. If we look at the popularity, um, and this is what I wanted to show, that. Looking at the numbers, it looks like Java is an extremely popular language. Sure, there are different indexes, there are different ways of measuring popularity. All of these are probably imprecise methods. Now, it is, it is surprising that not only it is the most popular language nowadays, but this popularity is increasing over the time. So it's getting more and more popular. Um, if we look at the numbers on, on this month, April 2016th, Java, it's the, not according to this index, the Tayobi index, which is probably one of the most precise ones based on the, the, what this company do, which is an analysis of millions of lines of code every single day for many customers. So they look at the numbers, uh, they have real numbers, right? And they came up with this index. And if we look at it, uh, it turns out that Java, uh, there's a distance of almost eight points uh, to the next popular programming language. And this distance has been growing. Uh, in the past, it was less than eight points. So Java is increasing its popularity. It wouldn't be fair to just look at one number. So I, I tried to look at some other numbers and try to spot also this, this uh, trend. And if we look at Git, GitHub, and GitHub definitely is, is a place for hipsters, right? So if we look at hip, uh, GitHub, Java started like very low like in 2008, it was in seventh position in the rank. But if you look at the trend, Java is this blue line. It's been growing and growing and growing and growing. Now it's the second most popular language in GitHub, the history place. Of, of course, number one is JavaScript. Um, 
but that, that's been almost all the time since the beginning. Uh, but this can show that even in the open source, again, sorry for insisting on that term, hipster community, Java is becoming a very popular language. It's probably, it's a little bit counterintuitive because most people would say, you know, Postgres for new open source projects is not a good choice, but it is, at least in terms of popularity. And last but not least, there's, I took a third index to try to see if this is a common trend, common opinion among, among people that build popularity indexes. And it looks like, again, Java is again number one. The, the, the second and third players are different in this index than from the previous ones. But anyway, what we can conclude without any kind of doubt after looking at these three numbers is that Java is either the first or the second or, I mean, it's among, definitely among the top three pro programming languages in the world. So going back to my initial point, we need to really pay attention to Java uh, in the Postgres community because it's really important. Might be the most important language for, for us to interact with. So let's look at the past. Because of course, looking at the past is a, is a nice way of understanding where we are and what the mistakes were and how we can improve on, on them, right? Um, so in order to prepare for this talk, uh, we did some analysis and, and uh, some questions about key players in Java and Postgres in the past to see uh, what they thought about the technology. And these are some of the conclusions that we came, came up with. So the first thing is that there seems to be like a, an impotence mismatch between Postgres and Java. First of all, uh, Postgres is written in C, ANSYS C, which is a, a, a language where you basically manage the memory by yourself, whereas Java is a completely different parting in terms of programming, where memory is more or less managed by you, by the JVM. And this brings a completely different model. So, many programmers that are comfortable in one of those models are not as comfortable in the other. And this creates a, a difference. Other languages don't have these properties for the good or the bad and are more uh, close to the Postgres model. Then there's also something else, which is Java requires a JVM to run the code. And this also brings another difference because Postgres in C code you just execute a binary and that's it. So just think about in terms of community it turns out that there's not a lot of people in the Postgres hacker community, I mean the, the people that develop Postgres, that either use Java or know a lot about Java. Because they happen to be different models, different memory models, different execution models, and of course different language. So as long as, as, as this is a big difference, it creates a, 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 a barrier for doing Java development for Postgres because few people know Java or are experts on both sides, both Postgres and Java. Uh, so uh, it, is a, it is a big problem. It, it was also the perception that Java is a slow. Uh, that was definitely the past. I wouldn't agree with that now in the present. Um, however, you may, you may divert, right? So how many of you do you think Java is a slow? Two, sort of, okay. <laughs> I would agree with that, yeah. It, it's bloated and um, depending on what you do and how you do it, it might be slow, it might be really fast. I mean, Java is also used on high frequency trading, uh, which are among the most uh, mm, intensive and, and latency sensitive environments, yet you have to do a lot of tricks. Um, so it can be fast, but it can also be slow. So um, what technologies do we had in the past in, in terms of Postgres and Java? Well, first of all, we have the PGJDVC. This is the uh, official driver, the JDVC driver. It's been here for a long time. It's a type four driver. You mean, you, you know what the JDVC types mean? Um, basically, a type four driver means that it's a na native driver. The driver implements a Postgres protocol. So this driver speaks a Postgres protocol, the, called the Phoebe protocol, front end back end protocol and it speaks it and natively, there's no conversion, no proxies in the middle. Um, there were some lessons learned, like uh, when I was interviewing the original PGJDVC developers about what went wrong when they started this project. The most uh, agreed comment was that uh, Postgres as a community was not involved in the process of the defining the JDVC spec. 
And this has turned out to be a big problem in the present because uh, many goodies, many features that Postgres has that are kind of unique to Postgres uh, are not present on the JDBC spec. So there's a lot of stuff that if you want to take advantage of Postgres, you have to go around because there's no support in the JDBC spec for that. Like for instance, the copy protocol, uh, the fast way for data ingestion or, or export from Postgres, it's not supported in JDBC because it's not part of the JDBC spec. So in order to work with the copy protocol in Postgres, you need to, to, to basically uh, break out with the standard and use Postgres specific methods that are supported in the driver, but are not part of the spec. So you're going out, out of JDBC. Same goes to JSON support. So there's no specific JSON support on the driver yet. Uh, but other than that, uh, there's no support in the spec. If we could have uh, form part of the uh, process of creating the spec, we may have influenced that in some way or another, but that wasn't the case. Um, all the problems that were kind of acknowledged was the uh, lack of a row ID in Postgres, um, which is present on all the databases, which made things like very simple to develop and it wasn't possible because there's no that kind of support. And also, uh, kind of a big mistake uh, was the use of the, of the question mark saying in, in, in the uh, prepared statements to mark parameters for the prepared statements because the question mark is also used as an operator in Postgres in the SQL language in many cases. So it uh, makes it a little bit awkward now to create prepared statements which also use this question mark as an operator because you have to escape them. So uh, that was uh, PGJDBC. Then there was PL Java. So by the way, who uses here of have used uh, JDBC, PGJ JDBC? Yeah, most of you, right? What about PL Java? Well, back, right? Okay, okay. So PL Java was a very interesting idea. Uh, it started like very strong. There was a lot of heavy development going on. And then at some point it kind of faded away. Uh, the idea of PL Java is to be able to run store procedures uh, written in Java. Uh, so you can call a function uh, in, and it will be programmed in Java. Uh, the way it would work, the model that PL Java works is having a JVM that will be fired when you uh, call the first function. So calling the function will fire the JVM, will execute the Java code, all the Java code is uh, uh, stored in uh, static functions and you're good to go. Problem is that firing a JVM per invocation of a function call is a little bit expensive. Right, as someone mentioned, Java is a little bit bloated. Uh, we'll see with Java 9, but that's a different story. So uh, good news is that PL Java supports caching the JVM per session. So if you make several calls per session, uh, JVM will still be cached there, so it's a good option. Um, so you really need to take care about wh whether to use it for like latency sensitive applications or, or you're good with this kind of caching behavior throughout the session. Um, it has a JDBC API. Good news is that J this JDBC API is not going over the network. Uh, rather, it's using the SPI. SPI is an internal uh, API for Postgres for calling, um, calling uh, basically uh, the database. Um, so it uses GNI to transform from the uh, SPI interface, which is a C interface, to JDBC. Good news is that this is completely hidden for you. So you just write normal JDBC calls and in, in, the behi in behind the scenes, this will be calling the database directly, attached to the... Really? Yeah. Oh, okay, didn't... No, not at all. Might be an implementation detail, I did, didn't know, but... Okay, okay. But at least theoretically, they, they wrap, yeah, they wrap SPI which should be pretty efficient in terms of accessing the database. Uh, at one point, PL Java offered support for uh, GCJ, the GNU compiler for Java. This is completely deprecated by now. It only supported Java 1.4, and that was compiling the Java code to native code and didn't require JVM. But this, again, this also faded away. Uh, Trade-offs by using PL Java, as long as there's no uh, kind of a permanent JVM running all the time, if you need kind of persistent state, you could either save the state 
uh, to the session. So there's a concept of a session in TL Java, which lasts your connection. If that's enough for you, you're good to go because you can store state in memory attached to the session. If you need to attach a state that should survive across sessions, uh, the only thing you can do is use a database. Fortunately, you have one close to you. So uh, that's the only way that you have to, to write it durable to, to this, to the database. There was another effort called PLJ. Any of you has, have used PLJ? Okay, one. Mm. PLJ was, um, it was, it was surprisingly coming out, out at the same time of PL Java, more or less, and the idea was completely different. So rather than firing a JVM per method called invocation and then caching it later, uh, the idea is like, let, let's just fire JVM at the beginning and then keep it running. And then let's call that JVM. This, of course, brings theoretically more performance because you don't need to start new JVMs all the time, but at the same time, it has a problem that there's a, there's a lot of security concerns with that, with that model. Because then many users could use the same JVM, uh, JVM is like shared, so you have to create like a multi-tenant JVM. Some of the databases, by the way, have followed this approach, like Oracle. Oracle has a, I have to say, very impressive uh, JVM uh, running alongside the, the database, and it's kind of a, a multi-tenant JVM, where the garbage collection happens per user. So it's the kind of a separate heap per user. It's a multi-tenant JVM. It's pretty impressive. So this was more or less, without the multi-tenant uh, garbage collection mechanism, that was the intent of PLJ. Um, the problem with PLJ is that uh, there was a really heated discussion in the, in the mailing lists to, so as to which solution to include in core, whether PL Java or PLJ. The end result was that none of them got included in core. Because it was not a really good solution, but that's why it happened. So, that was an analysis of the past and the lessons that we have more or less learned about this. Let's look at what do we have here? What is the present? So there's a lot of Java text that we can talk right now. First one is the JDBC driver itself, which we have already mentioned. So, this driver, the good news is that it's in a really good shape right now. It was, development was a little bit stalling in the last few years. Uh, the traffic in the mailing list went down and it was like not very active under development and performance was honestly not great. But in the last one, two years, things have changed significantly. A lot of new bot has come into the group and new developers are, are developing PGJDBC. It's uh, the build mechanism has been switched to, uh, from uh, Ant to, uh, to Maven, thank you. Uh, that was a big hit, it's moved to GitHub and it's been modernized. Uh, what is more important is that performance has improved significantly. So, uh, if you're using older versions of JDBC, and by older, if you look at the numbers, it do, don't look like you're too far away from the current version, I really encourage you to try first and of course, and then upgrade to the newest versions. Like, uh, who's running here version prior to 1200? Like, uh, you know which versions are you running? PGJDBC? No? Well, I mean, you really have to, to look for the latest versions, uh, like uh, 1207 or so. They are really, really much better performance than, than they were previous versions. So just have a look at those, which versions are you using? You, you may see a, a big performance improvement. It is, of course, a very reliable choice. It's been the de facto uh, way of accessing Postgres from, from the driver. So it's a it's good, choice, good choice. But it's not the only one. There's another Java driver, which is called the next generation driver, the PGJDBCNG. The name is a little bit awkward to pronounce. Uh, it, the idea is to build a completely new driver. It's a still a JDBC driver, so it's following the JDBC spec. But the principles under which this new driver will build uh, were more modern and completely different. So the first idea of PGJDBC NG, which I'll call now NG to make it shorter, is to, uh, first of all, not support old versions of Java, old versions of Postgres, uh, and old versions of the protocol. Because those three legacies are a significant amount of the code base for the JDBC driver. 
So by just focusing on newer versions of Postgres, Java, and, uh, and um, protocol, uh, you, could, you could get rid of a lot of problems and all, on all legacy. Then rather than implementing the, the wire protocol uh, from scratch, because this again, it's a type four driver, which means that it speaks natively the Postgres protocol, uh, it used Neti, which is a uh, network IO, async IO framework, which is great for implementing net network protocols. So it uses Neti to simplify and to be more performing on the network layer. And then it supported only Java 7 uh, with, uh, with all the goodies that come with Java 7 to implement you know, more, um, more easier code. Um, it, again, it also started like very strong and achieved a lot of milestones in the while. Uh, development is a little bit stalled. I, I would say, I wouldn't say stalled probably because it's going on, but it's definitely slowed down. Uh, the latest release was 0.6 in October last year. Though it's still a good driver. I think it needs, it still needs some more mature uh, development, uh, but it's a really good option. There are other drivers. Uh, there's a type five driver from Progress. I don't know, do we have anyone from Progress here? No? Okay. So this is mostly a known driver. Uh, few people know this driver in the community. Any one of you have ever heard of this driver before? No, okay. It is a type five driver, uh, which if you look, go to Wikipedia, you'll see there's no definition for type five. Uh, JDBC drivers. So it's kind of something something above what it's a type for. I don't know exactly what it means. Uh, but well, it's it's a commercial driver and I've seen a few commercial projects using it. So it's an all option. Seems to be a fairly complete driver. I have not any personal experience with it. So. There's another Postgres driver, uh, which is the Postgres async driver. This is a very interesting pro project because it is the first known JDBC driver. So this driver does not follow the JDBC specs. It rather has its own API. And it's meant to be completely async. So the idea is JDBC, if you really look at the spec, everything is synchronous operations. And nowadays programming models are mostly focusing on async programming. <coughs> There's, and the JDBC spec really limits you there. So in order to, to break free and, and be async, uh, you, need, you basically need to come up with a new API. So that's what this driver did. This is a non-JDBC driver. It's written in Scala and also supports MySQL. So it's, it's kind of interesting driver. It is also based on Neti, uh, this uh, network async IO framework that I mentioned before to implement the protocol, both the Postgres and the MySQL protocol. And it's under active development right now. So as you can see, there's a lot of drivers. There's even more drivers available for Postgres. There's another one called the RxJava uh, JDBC driver. This is another kind of mix. It is a JDBC driver, so it follows the JDBC specs. Uh, so again, you can program with a new API. However, all those calls have been wrapped in ASIC methods and has used their RxJava framework. I've, how many of you have used RxJava? Okay, so only two here. Um, you know where it's reactive, right? This new programming model, new programming paradigm based on composable uh, events to how to, to rather than, than you know, query for stuff, just react to events that happen. In this case, the event could be the database pushing data back to you as a result of a query. <clears throat> so RxJava is a framework for uh, reactive programming. And uh, I love it, it's, it's really cool and it's very powerful. And it lets, lets you express like type of callback stuff in a very nicely manner. And you can compose operations so you can change callbacks on top of callbacks in a very simple manner. No need to, you know, to create nested stacks of, of callbacks and callbacks and callbacks. This is very easy to use. So RxJava JDBC is a JDBC driver uh, built with RxJava that drops the synchronous JDBC calls into synchronous calls and make, it, uh, make them easier to, to use for the, for the user. Uh, it's JDBC generic, so it uses a JDBC driver underneath, so it can work with any database, and of course that includes Postgres. So as you can see now in the present, there's a huge variety of drivers that you can choose from. Uh, we did some benchmark to try to compare some of them. Uh, it's not complete yet, so 
We don't have numbers for most of the uh, drivers. But we did test the, the, what is called the official driver and the uh, NG driver. Um, despite the NG driver uh, meant to, uh, was this having been def designed as a, as a more performance driver, uh, our own tests, your millage main variety of course, show that as of today, uh, and especially due to the uh, significant performance improvement that the official driver had, it's, per it's performing better, the, the official driver. However, both are, are probably, again, really good options. This is, this is this execution time, so less is better. So in all our tests, the uh, official driver performed better than the uh, NG driver. All right, more good news about the present, PL Java. PL Java, it's making a comeback. Uh, so uh, it got active development uh, uh, some two years ago, more or less, and uh, it started again, and now we have version 1.5, which was released a couple of weeks ago, a little bit more. So now we have PL Java 1.5, it is a very decent release, and uh, it's been modernized, uh, mavenized, and supports Java from version six. So I really suggest you to give it a try. I think it's a really great improvement that we can have now PL Java again. Some best practices for you. Uh, first of all, really be aware of all the tutorials that you can find on the internet about P uh, JDBC. They're mostly outdated. They contain uh, a lot of code that it's wrong. They don't usually treat exceptions well. Uh, they tell you like you have to use class for name to load the driver. That's no longer necessary if you're using uh, modern Java. So just, just be aware of those. Uh, just follow these practices, best practices. Don't load the driver. That's not necessary since Java 6. Use, wait, try with resources if you're on Java 7 or, or more than that, which you hopefully are. Um, carefully check all the exceptions. JDBC is, is full of uh, exceptions and they're meant for something. Despite you like them or not, you have to check for them. And of course, use prepared statement, statements. I did a presentation a couple of years ago at PGCon in Ottawa, uh, a tutorial about uh, Postgres and Java with a lot of source code and good practices. Go to this link if, if you want to, to follow those or check those best practices. Um, what else? ORMs. So, um, yeah, don't really get me started on this. Despite being a long topic, uh, I have a really strong opinion about them. But uh, suffice it to say that if you really, really want to use Postgres, Postgres has a lot of functionality, has a lot of, a lot of features, a lot of uh, advanced SQL. And most ORMs, either hide this from you because they, they target the low, lowest common denominator of all the databases they support, or you have to do SQL by hand in order to, to leverage those possibilities. So that's, that's gonna be, a, at the end of the day, limiting your, your power with Postgres. However, good news, and this is of course my favorite, might be wrong, it's just my opinion, I have a good solution for you. Um, it is called Duke. How many of you do you know Duke? Okay, a few of you. Uh, Uke is a mapping layer uh, from the database to Java programs. And it's meant to, first of all, it's not an ORM per se, from a literal definition, it's just a mapping software. However, it's, it's good enough uh, to, first of all, leverage SQL. So it's meant, this, it's meant to have all the SQL, all the power you can have with SQL on this framework. And it also uses a syntax, which is a fluent API, which really resembles SQL. So if you look at this screenshot, the left is a SQL written, uh, query written in SQL, the right is pure Java code that compiles, that it's statically compiled to, verified by the compiler that it's correct, even the table name and the columns, and it really looks like SQL. So just give it a try. I think it's one of the best ways of right now uh, doing uh, SQL from, from Java. We use it for, for ToroDB, for instance. And the future, because we have like, 10 minutes left, right? Okay, so what is in the future for us? And please, I know this is being recorded. Don't take this, uh, this is just my opinion, my view. Might be completely wrong. As usually, most people who talk about the future in technology fail miserably, so don't watch this talk two years from now and say, hey, you were completely wrong. 
might be. But let's see, some predictions. First of all, I expect uh, the JDBC driver, the official one, and the next generation driver to improve significantly. Especially the official driver, there's a lot of manpower behind right now. So I expect it's gonna get more stuff done, more performance and, and new features. So uh, I believe it's, it's, it's gonna be in good shape in the future. Um, I'm really pushing right now to get uh, binary support for the uh, JSONB type in the protocol. Right now, uh, both JSON and JSONB types, the JSON types that Postgres supports, are sent as text over the wire, which is pretty shameful. Really, uh, it's, it's a shame. We have a, a serialized format, binary format in the, in the back end, and as Java users, we also understand these kind of graphs on objects or hierarchies in code, and then we marshal and marshal everything from to text. Uh, if we contrast this with all the databases like MongoDB, uh, they, they send uh, the JSON documents in another format, which is another binary format, but it's, it's already parsed and sent as is over the wire. Could be an improvement for Postgres. It's been already suggested in the mailing list. Uh, it's not been even agreed yet on which format should be serialized the JSON over the wire, but I believe this is something could be done and should be done, and, and many Java users are, are claiming for that. I also think there's a PL Java renaissance. It's, it's gonna come back uh, PL Java strong and it's a really good thing. Like uh, there's a lot of use cases for like PL Java. I've seen some customers that want to do like really heavy operations on XML, like for instance. Yeah, it's now, nowadays JSON is everything. There's a lot of people use, still using XML over there. And um, Java has support for excellent XML uh, libraries which can do like magic uh, even more than what you can do achieve on Postgres alone. So it's like really good use for these kind of things. Um, maybe PL Java or some other forms of, of Java inside the database may also have a comeback because there's a lot of interest also in running, running Java. Um, in my company, we're also working on, on a project it's just on, on first steps, uh, but it's meant to have to launch a Java JVM as a background worker. So you can have a permanent JVM running alongside Postgres which could connect to Postgres and, and execute Java code not tied to a particular session or a particular function invocation. So PLJ or some other form of a JVM running alongside Postgres may also see a, another comeback in the future. Uh, well, at least we're trying not to. And uh, finally, I wanna introduce you to some uh, project we, we, we also started working in our company. It's, it's, in a, it's definitely a work in progress and uh, might be interesting for you. The idea of Phoebe, which is uh, uh, the Greek name of a god, but it's pronounced like the same way as the Postgres protocol, the front and back end protocol. It's an idea of a new driver, yet another driver for, for Postgres. Uh, the reason behind this driver is that current drivers, especially the JDBC drivers, are limited to what the JDBC spec says, which is what I was explaining to you before, right? We couldn't influence the JDBC spec. So there are many things that Postgres does that the JDBC spec doesn't do. So there's, they are not supported in the driver. And one of the things that we want to implement in a driver is support for logical decoding. So you know what logical decoding is in Postgres? Let's see some, some heads. Um, so logical decoding is a way, it's a functionality that was introduced recently in Postgres to basically uh, create a stream of logical changes that happen to the database. So whenever you do an insert, an update, a delete to the database, an abstract now, right? All that can get logged to a, let's say, text format, to a SQL query format, to whatever format you want. And that will get streamed out of the database. So you can use that to replicate the, to other databases, to other data stores, uh, for replication, for many other purposes, for online filtering of the information, for real-time applications, has like many uses. And there's no support, logical decoding goes over the Postgres protocol, so it has to, you have to understand the Postgres protocol in order to consume this stream of changes. And there's no support in, on the Java drivers for doing so. So one of our goals was to support this logical decoding and other features, and in order to do that, we needed to speak the Postgres protocol. And as soon as we started implementing the Postgres protocol, we found that we can, at the end of the day, build a new driver. So, um, Phoebe is a new Postgres driver. It's still working progress. It's not working right now, uh, but feel free to join us. 
Um, it is async and reactive by design. So it's based on RxJava. And the idea is that every operation that you perform with the database, against the database, is gonna be uh, reactive. So you will basically define the operations that you want to perform upon events that happen with the database. It could be a query, could be a logical streaming, uh, a logical decoding event, like you know, some data was changed on the database and you say, hey, I wanna run this code upon this event happening on the database. Um, it also targets clusters, not individual servers. So we want to bake into the driver the, the functionality to, to basically say, hey, I mean, we're, we're, never, we're no longer alone. Uh, so a Postgres database is usually part of a replication uh, set or, 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 or a sharding cluster or whatever. So the idea is you can target more, more than one server from the driver. It is also based on Netty. I believe Netty is one of the best Java software libraries frameworks available in the world, especially for network async, async I.O. operations, and makes it very easy to implement the, the Postgres protocol, the wire format protocol. And one cool thing is that by design, we're doing the, most of the operations to go uh, 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 off-heap memory, to use off-heap memory. So this basically turns Java into a, a, a memory-managed uh, uh, software and it allows us to be really efficient and to avoid many copies of memory between the driver, the program user, and the network. So basically, uh, we are doing zero copy. We're trying to achieve zero copy from the network to the Java driver to the application. Some of the expected features that we want to target are uh, use the binary protocol by default. Uh, you know, the Postgres protocol supports the text format and a binary format. We want to support the binary mode, support Unix domain sockets, this is yet unsupported in Postgres. Um, support, as I said, logical decoding. Support also query pipelining. Uh, the ability to launch several queries in a kind of a pipeline and then collect all the results asynchronously after that. Um, fully asynchronous operation, of course. Um, to say, to have the ability to easily express with an API, hey, I wanna send this query out to several servers. And uh, if you're targeting a Postgres cluster with a read, write, master, and several uh, secondary slave nodes, which are read-only. So if this is a read-only query, send it to the slaves. If it's a write query, send it to the master. So just send this query to the cluster and the software will choose where to launch it. And of course, have a really fluent style API. A modern API, like it's very easy to use. It'll be compatible also with, with Java 6, though this requirement might be dropped. But so far, it's compatible with, with Java 6. This is how the API looks like. Uh, it's subject to change, but the idea is that it's very easy to use uh, and it's fluent, uh, like, like in this uh, lines of code, you basically say, hey, create a new Rx Postgres client, uh, connect to two servers. First one is uh, in, on IP version six on local host on this port. The other one is also on, on, on this ser server local host on another port. Uh, get the connection to all hosts, because you can see also get the first one available. So you, you fire the connections and return the first one. In this case, I wanna, let's say, use all of them, and then in it the, the driver. And then I say, hey, unconnected, which means basically when the driver connects, when the, this event fires, run this code. So I subscribe to the unconnect event, and then I just print the connection information. Uh, this is very basic, you, you don't even do a query with this, but I want to show how easy it is to connect to several clusters, several servers asynchronously, select the number of servers you want to connect to and react upon connection. Again, this is work in progress, this is open source, it's in GitHub, Postgres licensed, feel free to join us uh, developing this. And this is pretty much about the, uh, uh, the talk, I believe we have some minutes for some questions. Okay, questions, there was one over there. Yep. Okay, so. <clears throat> oh, okay, thank you. So the question is uh, regarding the ability to uh, route queries to uh, read only or, or read write master uh, servers, uh, how do we know whether the information is up to date with the, with the master? because replication can be async in Postgres, so the slaves may be delayed regarding to the master. Well, the idea is, first of all, not to make the driver extremely complicated. 
So the idea is that we provide an API which allows you to do that. Whether you want to do that or not, it's gonna be at the end of the day your decision. Uh, there's no clear way uh, in Postgres right now to get explicit feedback at the protocol level so we could you know, be uh, listening to the network and see who is up to date or not. So we're gonna, as of today, we're gonna leave that uh, decision to the user. We're just gonna provide the primitives for you to say, hey, fire this query and, and, and bring it up from the first slave available or I wanna target specifically the service. More questions? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. The, the idea right now, so uh, one problem also by using PL Java or any other, uh, so, sorry, I'm gonna repeat the question first. So did PL Java solve the single thread issue that they had before? So the main problem between uh, Postgres model and Java is that Java is a multi-threaded language. So you can create multiple threads within the same process. Whereas Postgres is a Postgres uh, process-based model where you have one process per connection. So uh, what happens if you create multiple threads inside uh, a Java program that are working against the connection? As far as I know, I'm not an expert on PL Java though, but as far as I know, what PL Java does, if you remember, I mentioned that PL Java wraps the SPI interface, the, the API that Postgres has in C to uh, access the database. Uh, what they do is to serialize all the calls through the SPI entry point. So SPI is wrapped on GNI calls and those all, they all serialize. So if you create like many threads in, in PL Java that you're supposedly allowed to do that, but then if you try to connect to the database from all those threads, uh, the connections will be serialized to the database. It won't break, it's just you don't get, get any, uh, any speed up. Okay, so uh, the question is about query pipelining in Postgres. Basically, query pipelining, it's a, it's a concept that it has not been developed extensively in Postgres. However, however uh, the protocol uh, kind of uh, permits that to happen. So if, if you look at the Phoebe protocol, the Postgres protocol, it's, it's mostly a completely async protocol. Uh, not only uh, you can get replies asynchronously in so many ways, but there's also asynchronous events happening that you have to be watching over the wire. Um, there's nothing preventing you from sending like several queries at once and waiting for the results to come back. It's not an easy task neither because there's, there's not like, there's a lack of kind of query ID or something like all the protocols or the other databases have. So it's a little bit tricky to implement query pipelining uh, per se, because the driver has to cooperate and try to remember the order in which the queries were sent. Uh, good things is that, uh, the good thing is that the results will come in the same order as you sent them. However, as long as it's a little bit tricky because of this, uh, no driver before explored this possibility. But we want to explore this possibility because, of course, I mean, if you're running uh, on a transaction mode, uh, at some point, if you fire a query that, that breaks, you'll roll back everything and you'll get errors. And so all this handling of errors after you throw some, you say, say you so throw like eight queries and the fifth of, while of those fail, how do you handle all the errors and recover all that? But it's possible, so technically it's possible from the protocol level. It's just, it's, it hasn't been explored on drivers. Part of it is that also the JDBC spec does not support query pipelining per se, so it's synchronous API. So you have to get around that. But the ability to, to summarize is to send five queries in a row and get all the results as soon as they happen without having to wait for the result to send the next query, wait for the results and the next query and so on. More questions? I have one question. How to replace and use Java because there is so much of Oracle? Okay, so are you dependent on Oracle when using Java? There's a lot of licensing debate about this. Uh, my personal opinion, I'm not a lawyer, uh, but my personal opinion is that uh, this, despite being covered by some Oracle-owned patents, uh, Java is uh, so far a completely free operating language. And as I've shown, it has a really vibrant community. I wouldn't bet on Java failing because of that, so I would be comfortable using Java. But if you're not comfortable using Java, you 
for sure can license it from Oracle. I mean, if you use the Oracle proprietary version of the JVM and you get a support contract and so on, you'll be pretty much safe because they're, they're providing that. So that's an option too, but not to avoid using Java just because of that. That would be my, my recommendation. Okay, thank you, thank you very much.